uh, Christina and Nadia, and they will introduce themselves and move it forward. And I will unmute them. And they're good to go. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm Christina. I'm a respiratory therapist here at Eisenhower. Um, a little bit about myself. I've worked here for about 16 years. Um, so I um, actually started off as an EMT and then moved to working in the OR and then uh, became a respiratory therapist um, about five years ago. Um, my job is specific um, to education. What I do is I educate all of our patients that are on respiratory medications um, that have come into the hospital and then been discharged. Um, I go over all their medications with them um, upon discharge just to make sure they understand how to properly administer um, the inhalers and nebulizers. Um, and then my coworker, Hello, I'm Nadia Jensen. I'm a respiratory therapist at, here at Eisenhower. I've been here almost seven years and also been working with pulmonary rehabilitation as well. I work alongside my wonderful coworker, Christina, and doing uh, respiratory education and follow-ups with patients after being discharged. So I'm um, happy to be here with you guys tonight. Thank you. So um, we're going to start with just a basic overview of what we're going to be covering. Um, so uh, by the end of this PowerPoint, um, what I would like you to um, get from this presentation is understanding what COPD is um, and understanding what drugs um, are used to maintain your airways, um, understand how to use your respiratory equipment, and identify if you are having an exacerbation. So COPD is uh, an umbrella term. So um, it's used to describe a pro progressive lung disease. Um, and then these are, these are the ones that are under the disease process. Emphysema, bronchitis, um, asthma that is reoccurring, and bronchiectasis. So this is a visual. So sometimes it's hard to understand exactly what's going on in your lungs. So I'd like you to take a look. So this, so our lungs look like a tree. So you have a, a tree trunk here. Um, and then you go down into the airway and you have your bronchioles. And then you have the smaller airways that read to your that lead to your alveoli. So with COPD, you have inflammation and you have mucus that clog these airways and that's what makes it so hard for you to breathe and get that oxygen down into the lungs. So these are just a few fun facts. Uh, COPD is the third leading cause of death. Um, there's more than 3 million people that have died of COPD in 2012. Um, so COPD is a progressive disease. What that means is you won't have COPD when you're an infant. It's something that develops um, with age and it affects more than 11 million Americans. So if you think that you have COPD, some of the things that you can ask yourself um, that may uh, kind of trigger a conversation with your, your primary care physician for you to seek um, help or consult from a pulmonologist would um, be, have you ever been exposed to irritants such as cigarettes, smoke. So an example of this is that when you were a child, did your, did your parents smoke in the car, right? You know, back in the day that our parents would smoke in the car with their cigarettes and the windows would be up and it wouldn't be a big deal and the kids are in the back of the car. So that would be an exposure. Um, now, do you get short of breath walking down the hallway with your friends that are around the same age group? Um, do you wake up in the morning with a productive cough always? Is this a chronic issue? Um, and do you cough up mucus? So these are some causes of COPD, um, cigarette smoking um, and vaping now, because that's a big thing, um, exposure to irritants. So um, mechanics or people who are, are exposed to irritants uh, due, to, due to work um, and fumes. And then there is a genetic disease called alpha-1 antitrypsin. Um, here's some basic signs and symptoms. Now you don't have to have them all, but if you have one or two, it should be alarming to you. Um, a chronic cough, 
um, wheezing. So if you can hear yourself audibly wheezing normally. Um, and we discussed earlier the production of phlegm. So if you're coughing up mucus and it's like a normal thing for you, it should be alarming. Um, shortness of breath. So if you go, you know, from your bathroom to your kitchen and you're experiencing shortness of breath, this should be alarming. Um, and tightness of the chest. So here's a few uh, respiratory medications that I want to cover. So there's two different types of respiratory medications. One is your maintenance medication. So maintenance medications are taken every day at the same time, no matter what. What it does is it reduces exacerbations, opens up your airways. Um, it doesn't help right away. So it takes about one to two weeks for the medications to kick in. So a lot of patients are non-compliant with these medications because they don't feel the instant relief um, in comparison to your, your short acting bronchodilators. So um, the goal for this is you know, to make sure that you're taking these maintenance medications to reduce exacerbations. Here's a few examples. Now inhalers, they come up with new ones every year. Um, so just here's a few. If you're not on any of these particular ones, that doesn't mean anything. These are just a few that I have pictures of. Um, so you have your really familiar one is your Advers right here is the purple circle disc. Um, that is one that you would take at um, twice a day. So we always recommend 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Now these medications, we always recommend rinsing your mouth after, after administering these. So this is just the act, action of the medication. So you have this purple um, outer area, that's your muscle. And then the pink inner area, that's where the inflammation inside the lung happens. And that those maintenance medications, what they do is they react with that inflammation and they decrease it, which then decreases the mucus. So when you have that inflammation process going on, your body sends mast cells to the area and it causes mucus to form. So with the use of your maintenance medications, you're reducing that inflammation and reducing that mucus. So short acting medications, these are your rescue inhalers. These are the ones that are always in your pocket. Um, these are the ones that are gonna help you breathe quickly, fast. Um, these also can be used if you know that if you're gonna go out running or go out for exercise, and you always get short of breath during these periods. This um, is the medication that you would take um, earlier prior to exercise to reduce um, the probability of an exacerbation. Here's a couple examples of your short acting bronchodilators. So we have albuterol, pro air, ventolin. Um, they're all the same medication, just different names. Um, and then we also have a Zofenex. This medication is prescribed to patients that may have an increase in heart rate due to albuterol. And then we have a combivent, it's albuterol and atrovent, it's a, du a dual combo. And then right here in the corner, we have an arrow chamber. This spacer helps with the delivery of these um, inhalers. So it increases the deposition of the medication from about 15 all the way to 85%. So um, we're gonna go over this, the arrow chamber at the end of the presentation. And if you guys have it, one of these inhalers, but you do not have a chamber, please reach out and I will make sure that I get you one. So this is a picture of a nebulizer um, and a picture of the solution that goes in here. So nebulizers um, are actually the same, uh, are delivering the same exact medication and dosage of the inhaler but it's just a different form. What the nebulizer does is allow for the medication to be delivered over a longer period of time, slowly opens up your airways and allows the medication um, to get deep into the lungs and uh, provides a more effective treatment um, during uh, periods of exacerbation. So this is, um, this is a little action plan. So, in the morning, every day when you wake up, what we recommend is you asking yourself, hey, how am I feeling today? So green would, would mean that you're normal, everything's going well, you don't have to take your respiratory medications um, 
more frequently. Um, yellow would be maybe I'm having a fever. I'm having to use my albuterol more often than not. Um, so at this point, we want you to contact your primary care physician. Let them know, you know, hey, I'm not feeling well. I've had to use my rescue inhaler more often than usual. Maybe I'm coughing up some mucus. So something alarming is going on. And red would be, I really can't breathe. I really need um, some help. And at this point, um, anytime you have any breathing issues, you want to call 911. Um, your airways can close up really fast and it's very dangerous. So just make sure that you seek medical attention immediately. So um, our goal of this presentation is for you to recognize, hey, I'm not feeling well before it gets to the point of going to the ER. So the increased we wheezing, you know, more sputum than not than normal. Um, maybe you have a fever. Um, anything like of these symptoms should be alarming to you and you should seek medical attention. So this is um, an airway clearance cough. Um, because I have people in the room and it's COVID, I'm not gonna demonstrate, but I am gonna just read through how to properly um, do the cough. So what this cough does is effectively clears your airways of any phlegm. So you're gonna sit up nice and tall and you would take a slow breath in and then you would cough on your way out. And then you would take a bigger deep breath in and then forcefully cough out. And then you would repeat that with the, the biggest deep breath you could take in and then forcefully cough out. And what that would do is really help clear those airways. Um, we would ask that you repeat this two to three times um, to really get that mucus out. And it becomes really effective, especially if you do this after taking your nebulizer treatment or your inhaler. So the inhaler would open up the airways so that when you do this effective cough, your airway is larger and dilated so that you can get that mucus up and out of the lung. So here's a few healthy living tips that I want to go over. So always carry a bottle of hand sanitizer with you. You never know if, if you're going to have access to a sink to wash your hands. Um, take your own writing pen with you. So when you go to the doctor's office, you don't have to touch the pen at the front desk. Um, you know, with everybody wearing masks now because of COVID, it'll reduce, um, you know, the spread of the flu. Um, so I think that that'll be really beneficial, but just remember to avoid touching your mouth, your nose and your eyes. Um, and, you know, really good hand washing techniques is critical. So here's um, just the basic CDC guideline of hand washing. So when you wash your hands, you just wanna make sure that you're scrubbing your hands really nice together and friction is what really gets the germs off of the hands. It's not so much your cold or hot water or whatever soap you're using, it's really that friction. Um, and go above, all the way above your wrist when you wash your hands. So in closing, if you smoke, please quit. Um, exercise, eat right, um, uh, you know, practice your breathing techniques. Um, please take your medications as prescribed. Um, if you use oxygen, use oxygen as needed and practice good hand washing techniques. So um, normally we're able to see you guys and give you our contact information and provide you with material. But unfortunately, because of COVID, we can't meet um, in person. So please take down my contact information. I would love to send you spacers, material, um, I can call you. We can go over anything in depth that you may um, have questions about. Um, and then, um, so what we're gonna do is, um, we have a few exercise um, devices that um, Nadia is gonna go over and then she's gonna show you how to use your, um, your spacer, that arrow chamber that attaches to um, the inhaler. And then we'll open up for um, questions, okay? Okay, so I'm going to go over those devices that Christina was discussing with you guys. The first one I wanted to go over with is the arrow chamber. And like Christina said, um, this chamber provides greater deposition of the medication of the HFA type of medication. HFA stands for the type of propellant that is in this 
medication. Typically this medication is your short acting bronchodilator. So this medication is the one that starts working within five minutes and can last up to a few hours. So if it is brand new, what you wanna do with this is shake it and go ahead and waste a dose. And you can, if you can see it, I'm not too sure if you can see it, but I'm gonna go ahead and waste a dose and you can see how strong this propellant is, if you were able to see that. Um, so you'll waste that dose. So now it is actuated for use. You'll go ahead and place it at the back of this chamber. You're gonna go ahead and actuate the dose. So now the medication is inside the chamber and it won't escape, okay? Even with the lid taken off, there's a one-way valve here and the medication will not come out of here until you take that inhalation. So prior to taking your inhalation on any of your respiratory medications, you wanna go ahead and make sure that you exhale all of your air first, that's stale air, so that you get your medication deposition really good down into the airway. So then you're gonna go ahead and sit up nice and tall, exhale and inhale. and you will hold your breath for 10 seconds if able, and then go ahead and exhale. Typically a dose is two pumps. So you'll go ahead and do that again, okay? The next device that we have to show you is if you have been hospitalized ever or had a surgery, um, this is called an incentive spirometer. And what this device does is it's like physical therapy for the lungs and it helps um, with your air sacs and improving your lungs after like an, a pneumonia or an exacerbation. Um, also it helps improve um, your air sacs if there is some congestion secretions in there, it can at times um, induce cough as well. So I'll show you how to do that. So you're gonna always sit up nice and tall so you can get a nice, good, deep breath. You're gonna take a nice, slow, deep inhalation and you're gonna hold it for three, for three to five seconds if you're able. And you're gonna go ahead and exhale and you're gonna to continue to do that exercise for 10 times. Um, you want to make sure that you don't do it too quickly so the exercise is as effective as possible. A lot of the time, some patients will do it like this. And that is incorrect. It's not an effective exercise. Always make sure that you take a nice, slow, deep inhalation. I'll go ahead and show you again. and you'll go ahead and exhale, okay? And we do recommend, you know, with our pneumonia patients or an exacerbated patient after their discharge from the hospital to continue these exercises three to four times throughout the day, 10 times in a row, okay? And the last device I'm gonna show you is like, um, Christina was mentioning, um, you know, when there is that inflammation in the airway and the mucus production, we want to make sure that we are keeping those lungs nice and clean and clear so that, you know, that infection doesn't progress or get worse or spread throughout the airway, throughout the lungs. So this device, what this is called a flutter valve, um, what it does is causes or produces a negative a positive pressure in the airway and also provides oscillation. And there's a dial on here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, that is one through five. And as you increase the number that provides a greater resistance as you are exhaling through this device. So with this device, what you're gonna do is exhale into it. So nice big deep breath in your nose and exhale through the device. And after you do this repeatedly, it will provide a, and induce a cough. And you can feel that flutter, that oscillatory effect in the airway as well. 
So with this device, you would do this three to four times a day as well and 10 times in a row. And it's really effective in helping keep the airways clean. And we do recommend that you do this after your breathing treatments as well. Okay, so um, we'll go ahead and answer some questions. Any questions that you guys might have? If you guys need any of these devices, the arrow chamber, any of them, you can please reach out to us so that we can assist you in, in getting those. Any questions? So, so I think I'm there. So feel free to um, unmute yourself if you'd like to ask a question. I know I, um, uh, we have a question in the chat. It says, uh, what is the benefit of using an arrow chamber? So the benefit of the arrow chamber is you will get greater deposition of the medication because like I showed um, the propellant, when you have that propellant, most of that medication hits you in the back of the throat instead of getting down into the airway. And studies do show that when you don't use the chamber, you get 13% of this medication. And with the chamber, you're getting 87%. Okay, because you are able to control um, that nice, slow, deep breath and the timing of the inhalation and actuation of this medication, most of it does hit you in the back of the throat. Some patients will find that after they start using this together, they'll, they'll think to themselves, I don't, I don't think I'm getting the medication. It's because they're not feeling it hit them in the back of the throat anymore, but they are actually getting more of the benefit of the drug. Another thing I wanted to mention, um, if in fact you do get one of these or have one, if you are inhaling and it's making a whistle, you are doing it too forcefully. Okay, so don't do it like that. Nice, slow, even breath. Any other question? I know I have another question. Yes, absolutely. Because <laughs> I'm one of your patients. <laughs> so it's easy to, easy to have. Um, so if I'm taking, I have two different inhalers. One for, like, say I go um, have an athletic kind of morning where I'm going to go biking or do something. And I know I'm going to take my, like, Ventolin and to open yeah, up my airways. Short acting, right? Yep, short acting, get it going, um, which has kind of been prescribed to me. How soon or how, how much time do I wait or do I between that and my normal, um, like Simbacorp? Your Advair, something like yes. that. Um, you know, there isn't a, a, an exact time where they do say, oh, you must wait at least 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Um, but, you know, if you are opening up these airways, that's good that this medication starts working within five minutes and it's starting to open up your airways lasts up to four hours, your short acting. So now your airways are nice and open and you can go ahead and take your maintenance medication because there isn't that constriction that you had possibly earlier. So there isn't a, like an exact time frame. Got it. And then with the um, not emergency stuff, your maintenance dosage, I know, in, in, is it always the same that with like Advair and Simbicort and those that you need to, you should, wash your mouth out within a certain yes. amount of time? Yeah, so the reason that we say with the maintenance medications, if they have a corticosteroid in them, you wanna make sure that you do rinse your mouth because some patients can get the tendency to get thrush and you wanna make sure that you rinse your mouth thoroughly and spit after administration of the medication. Even the, the liquid solution in a nebulized form if you know you do take a corticosteroid that's nebulized after that breathing treatment, you also want to make sure that you rinse and spit your rinse your mouth really well. All right, questions from others. Candace, I know you always have questions. Is that there somewhere? No one. All right, so you can also. Um, I mean, I know you don't want to necessarily ask questions on this. You can also, the phone numbers are on the screen for uh, Christina and Nadia, and um, feel free to reach out to them. Um, I know they would be more than happy to take your call and to answer any kind of questions you may have, or, or if you were, you know, thought about this, or you see the video later and you say, oh, I forgot about something to ask, feel free to reach out. Um, you can also reach out through Candace at the center or Guillermo, and either one of them will be able to um, help do that. All right, 
Any final thoughts from anyone? All right. Well, then I think, uh, Candace, unless you have any final thoughts, I think we're probably good to go and bring it to a close. You're on mute, Candace. She's still on mute. There, I'm so sorry. I was on mute. You'd think I'd have this down by now to this muted on you thing, but sometimes we just forget to look. I was just thanking Christina and Nadia uh, for their presentation tonight, and thank you for joining us, uh, those of you that joined us for this. Um, and uh, hopefully, we'll we'll see folks at uh, more of these to come. Yeah, and I did notice that um, uh, you can, if you have questions for um, Candice or Guillermo or someone at the center, you can um, email programs at thecentercv.org. Yeah and yeah. uh, that will get directly into get you an answer quickly and then they'll if should you need to you can they will always connect them to me and or to nadia and christina easily enough all right that, all right so thank you everyone thank you for having us thank you everyone have stay safe night. and have a good evening